Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Fear Fic is the term for short horror fiction, mostly posted on the web. It includes any and all related subgenres. Join three assholes talking basement goo slime beast, inebriated interstellar traveler abysme, and irritable ghostly man whore dead palette as they read all stories horror and internet related, paragraph by paragraph, and bullshit while they do it. From adolescent revenge fantasies to subtle postmodern narratives about real life events and everything in between, they read it in critique. You better believe it. Kick it to the cold open, white boy. I think the political discourse around certain issues right now is just far too extreme. Too many extremists on both sides. Do you guys agree? No. Nope. If anything, it should be more extreme. It should be like American Gladiators, red versus blue, constantly 24-7 atop death drops using giant Q-tips or whatever the fuck those things were, Mm -hmm. where people are just battering each other constantly. Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter, red and blue, fighting atop a, you know, fucking pyramid as, like, the president shoots tennis balls at you from... (laughs) I thought it was I thought it was blue lines matter. Blue lines matter? Yeah, isn't it blue lines thin blue lines matter? Maybe. Blurred well, lines matter. <laughs> blurred lines matter. <laughs> oh no. Well, I wasn't talking about that kind of stuff. Though. I was I was talking about mint ice cream. Men's ice cream. <laughs> Mm. What Mincy's brand is this? ice cream, bloody ice cream <laughs> from vaginal discharge. <laughs> it's the new uh, Ben and Jerry's flavor. God damn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mincy's rights. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no. MRAs. <laughs> uh, no, I am talking about Minta ice cream because too many people are like, man, Minta ice cream sucks. And then Minta ice cream is great. And I'm kind of a moderate on the issue. I don't know about you, gentlemen. I have never met someone who did not like Minta ice cream. All right. Are you kidding? They're yeah. all over Twitter. Well, well that's... Those are people that never are met by anybody because they're just yeah. inside. I, get, I, I suppose that there probably are a significant amount of bots on Twitter that are... You I know, prof- hate mint. Mm. It's just a bunch of Russian bots trying to distract us from Ukraine saying they hate mint ice cream. Yeah, Sowing d- disinformation. Mint information. Yeah. <laughs> mint inf- fucking Dis- hell. Mint information. <laughs> Dis- mint information. Mint information. Ch- uh, you know, mint ice cream. Here's here's my thing on chocolate chip mint ice cream. It's it is a good flavor. However, there are certain mint ice cream companies companies that make it that make it taste like toothpaste. Yeah. I will agree with that. You have to get the good. You ha- good. It and has so to be green. There's got to be some mint in there. Got to have some chocolate chips in it. There's got to be some cement in there. It's got to uh, come in a paper hat. <laughs> it's got to be the served ish- in the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> the the issue that I'm running into here is that there is a local ice cream shop and it, it's it's nice high end ice cream, but their their chocolate chip mint ice cream is absolute garbage. Just hmm. that's it, kind of unforgivable if you're an it's ice un- cream shop. It is, and um, you know th- there are certain cheap mint ice creams that you can get that taste better than it, and so it's just like I can. I, I just want everybody to come together for sensible reforms on mint ice cream and have a referendum and say, like, listen, we gotta we gotta make sure that these mint ice creams over here, we these are bad actors. Come, come together, together right now, right now. <laughs> under mint, mint ice cream. <laughs> oh, 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 I chimed in with the "Haven't you people ever heard of this eating is- mint ice cream?" <laughs> Mintness. This is the second, all of I see. This is the second recording session in a row where Slime Beast and I have had the exact same thought at the exact same time. Unfortunately, at this time it's not going to line up on the audio because there's mm-hmm. a, like a half second delay. But uh, oh, that was beautiful. Elias fixed it. <laughs> yeah, go go for it. The, so, any more ice mint cream. ice cream songs? Yeah, ice cream. Yeah, your uh, milkshake, your mint milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> and they're like, "This isn't very good." Damn right. <laughs> I want better quality. La, la, really, you're an ice la, cream la, shop in the summer. <laughs> Tastes like toothpaste. La, 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 no, really, like, la. It's, it's hot out right now. And if I went to an ice cream shop and I got mint and I'm like, oh, this is going to be nice and cooling and, like, it tastes bad, I'd be pissed off. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so I, had, I recently had this issue. I work at a big uh, place big with a lot of baby. employees. I work for a big <laughs> baby. 
I work for the big baby. <laughs> work for boss baby. The big baby defensement ice cream. <laughs> God damn. Brandon over here working for big place. <laughs> Shameful. God damn it. <laughs> yes, I am working for a big place. <laughs> Trying to give away as few details as possible. Yes, I work for a big place. And so, what, what the hell do you <laughs> He's just, he's Brandon. a greeter at the front door. Welcome to big place. Home Again, place. I have to bring it back. I have to bring it back to this deposition that Brandon will have to sit for at some point. Uh, and where do you work, sir? Big place. <laughs> God damn it. And what do you do at big place? I eat chips. Chips. <laughs> Fuck. You mean like potato chips? Mint chips. <laughs> Fuck. Chocolate chips. In and then th- he's like, you may cross-examine the witness, and Brandon just goes, I rest my case, and he starts getting down off the stand. <laughs> like, no. Just leaves. No, no, sir, no, you can't leave yet. I leave place. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Big place. <laughs> Put, puts on work hat. <laughs> Hat is too big. <laughs> Falls down around the ears. <laughs> hat. A, the hat says hat. big place, but it goes off the side. It's not fully printed off the big place. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I work at... Okay, I work at big place. Mm-hmm. So I work at Big Place, and what they'll do, it, you know, it's hot out, so they'll have ice cream truck come up, and there's two different, they, they get a bunch of food trucks, and they have, some food trucks are food trucks where it's like, okay, we're going to hand out food, nobody has to pay for it, if you're an employee, you get free food. And then there's other ones where it's premium and you have to, like, <laughs> pay. Fuck. The, the, the fucking shitty ice cream truck, there's two of them, the shitty one that you don't have to pay for has fucking terrible it, you're just eating toothpaste and so like it's hot i'm working outside i oh i'm excited to get my ice cream and i get my mint ice cream and it's like eating toothpaste mm-hmm. and i eat half of the the little mini pint or whatever it is and i am physically ill mm. i am dying uh i have just consumed a, a cold tube of toothpaste and um, I'm regretting this, and I I, I kind of just want to go back and throw throw the the cup at them. I feel like what's happening is you think work that the uh, food trucks are pulling up, but they're actually delivery trucks bringing things to big place, <laughs> and you just keep going up to like the toothpaste truck. You know, ah, this mince is awful. <laughs> You know, that would explain the big place I work at is a toothpaste factory. I hate these food trucks. One of them's giving out ice cream that tastes like toothpaste. The other one's giving out ice cream that's like toilet paper. This one, <laughs> like, this one has ice cream that's like hand soap. <laughs> oh, it's fucking terrible. This one has ice This one has ice cream that's like cardboard boxes. I don't know. Uh, anyway. This one has ice cream that's like bags of Doritos. <laughs> This one has ice cream that's like ice cream that's a different flavor from what I thought. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, right. boy. Abysme, are you dead? Abysme is dead. One second. Abysme is dead. Abysme is in chat asking for one sex. So he's he's like, I guess we got to give him like five minutes. Um, I don't think he's having sex. I think I think he's getting spousled. <laughs> getting spousled. Spousing spousal here. For- <laughs> what the fuck? You can't say that. You can't. You can't say that. There's like this hillbilly, like a like a really woke hillbilly who appears on television and just walks into scenes. You can't say that. It's like in old shows, <laughs> reruns. Have you, have you seen people get super mad about like the use of the word spastic? Oh, yeah. And it's like, well, the meaning is different from country. No, it's what I say in my country. British people. It's like when Americans would get really offended at the word cunt for some reason. Mm-hmm. It's like, who who cares? And then, uh, mm. yeah, I, I, it, it's it's so weird because over here, like the word spastic does not have like it has negative connotations, obviously, but it's well, not yeah. like it's not offensive. Well, the thing is, it, it's really cool. Like when an American person gets offended by what somebody says overseas, the best thing to hit them with is, "Yeah, you're right. Everyone should act like Americans." <laughs> like, wait, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> 
You're right. The American idea of what things should be is right across the board in all countries. Wait, there, no. there was. <laughs> th- this is such a sidetrack, but while Abysme is away, there, there was an old video where a woman was complaining about cultural appropriation during Halloween. Like, hey, you shouldn't wear costumes dressing up like pumpkins, you know, yeah. P- uh, pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I shit you not, at the end of the video, she bows, puts her hands together and says namaste. And she's oh just this God. white chick. And it's like, and I don't, I don't think that there was any irony. Cause like, I, I know now past like everything that's happened, you know, th- there's like, Oh, she was trolling. This woman was not trolling. Okay. Mm-hmm. This was at the beginning of, of this whole conversation of this Good whole God. culture war. And it's just like, mm, yeah. And that was before the dislike bar was removed, so that was a good time. Okay, uh, Rika's car broke down. I have to go get her now. Two first an episode. Can't mm-hmm. you just uh, can't you just tell her that your car broke down on the way? <laughs> oh no, the garage door won't open. I can't can't possibly leave. Oh, I have to go uh, renovate a, a park, a local theme a park. A bus. Yeah, no, if you want to do two person, totally understand. Um, but yeah, I gotta go do this now. All Sorry. right, you have fun. Fuck off. <laughs> we'll do. This guy values his fucking marriage over the two of us. Fuck. Yeah, that's. I'm. I'm just gonna say it. that's pretty gay. Yeah, cringe. cringe. You know what? You know what? What? <laughs> the guy who didn't want to do the brainstorming, the SCPR, SCP, oh where everything God. is gone. Your fucking stroke of genius. Let's do it. I'm stroking okay, this, my what? How did you know that? Wait. Stroking my genius. Oh, okay. Fuck genius. This. Oh, not, I see. Okay. We're not reading this shitty story by Kane Mac about a baby blue jay. We're going to we're gonna brainstorm today. Literally who jay. Episode. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, Bailey J. Anyway, we're, we're going to just have a brainstorming session. What is the structure of this episode? So, welcome to this special episode of the Fear Fiction Podcast. Uh, Abysme is out getting paprika getting his paprika on <laughs> out in the wilderness i don't know and uh let's start over this episode <laughs> elias cut none of this out <laughs> let him flounder <laughs> let him flop around in this episode of the fear fiction podcast dead palette and slimeby sit down to brainstorm their own arg style group fiction project while this project may actually never come to fruition, may not have its own wiki with thousands of authors adding to it and ruining the entire canon, it, still it's fun to do. So, it let's brainstorm get. our own SCP, or RPC, or Wayward Society, or Back Rooms, or whatever. Or something incomparable to them. It's going yes. to be so fantastical. And we're we're just going to put our ideas out there, but we want to hear your ideas down in the comments below. Right. And the thing is, you know, maybe we'll do multiple ones. Maybe we'll get on a roll with one. But, you know, just the idea of we always complain about certain things, (laughs) you know, tropes and traditions within these, you know, group fiction projects. So what would we do as the complaining people? What's our fix? What's our thing we would do? Well, you know, I... I, ha- I have some ideas, some notes, so yes. why don't I just get into it? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the issue that these creative projects run into is giving people creative freedom to express themselves. <laughs> Fuck. So what you do is you just, to, to make sure the story is consistent, you just eliminate any variables that might cause somebody to have an original idea. Mm-hmm. And make sure that everything is consistent. So it's kind of like when a fine artist... Uh, gets to be of a certain stature and they no longer feel like making their art. They hire what is called fabricators. I see. And so, so here's what my plan is. My plan is I come up with an idea, a really cool creative idea, and I relay this idea to other writers and they unquestioningly for free write the stories that I want them to write and then narrate them. And then I am the executive producer. Hmm. who undersigns all of these and gets a share of them. And you call this the Schlemming Schlorage Units? Schlorage Schl- Units? <laughs> the Schlemming Schlorage Units? <laughs> Schlemmer Schlorage Units. I, so, the, let me talk about the sins of the Fleming Storage Unit up front. Um, the, the biggest issue that I ran I, you've into... You've heard the rumors, we're going to address them now. We're going to address them now. Um, it was stolen. No, so the the issue 
that we ran into was a number of them. Number one was too many goddamn rules. I tried to enforce too many fucking rules. And right uh, after saying that creative freedom is bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I tried to like put a bunch of different challenges in there to be like, Hey, try this second thing. Uh, and this ties into the first one is just saying, Hey, your first paragraph has to involve you opening up the fucking storage unit. And the last one has to have you closing it. That should have not been the thing. It should have just been like, there is a storage unit and there are, you're not allowed to have dead bodies because my story has a dead body and you're not allowed to do that and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Can't outshine so, the creator. Can't outshine the creator. That Those should have been the only two rules. Just make it, make it realistic, make it um, no dead bodies and you get your storage unit to do whatever you want. The things that I did right. Now I want to talk about what I did right. What I did right was, Hey, Hey, everybody, here's the the Fleming storage unit area. Here's what's nearby. You guys can flesh it out however you want, and that's how we got... I I just came up with the name Inspector Moo Moo's and a few others, and people just fleshed that out, and that was fun. That worked out fine. That was a good idea. What was a bad idea was a bunch of unnecessary rules. I'm like, yeah, and fucking include this Wikipedia article. I have no idea what the fuck I was thinking. And uh, same thing with uh, include you know this image like this fucking uh, uh, no just let people fucking make create sure what somebody create. shows their feet at some point it's, make sh- it's just a funny rule you know <laughs> it's just a funny rule that I came up with the the thing that I should have done is just say mood it, mood 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 just make sure the mood is consistent that we're not like writing anything goofy so you know the goofy <laughs> story doesn't take away from the serious ones that's, that's what I should have done because I'm a I'm a fucking idiot, and if we ever get around to like, you know, re-editing all of that shit, well, that's what we'll do. We'll right. we'll get rid of the rules. Well, as you know, and I don't know if that's a good point to move yeah, on no. to the next thing. As you know, I have the opposite problem. As I walk across my room, as you know, I have the opposite problem where I make up few rules, and then people kind of just do random shit, and sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> Like, uh, I came up with the fucking CRP Institute, the capture, restrain, provoke SCP style thing and had it where it was just like, this is the, this is the CRP Institute and it's comedic SCP. And if you don't want to be comedic, you don't have to really. And if you just do whatever you want, make up your own danger levels, threat level, Omega Teal, you know, whatever, (laughs) just do random shit. And I had a lot of fun writing those, but also immediately there was like a lot of divergence between what people were doing and it didn't really meld. And I think that might be why people stopped doing it is because it didn't make any fucking sets, you know, altogether. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the issue that you run into of there. There always seems to be some sort of external pressure to conform or to allow too much freedom and trying to find that balancing act is a difficult issue. What we run into with something like no sleep is there are a bunch of, well, you know, there there's, it's very clicky and everything. So there's that, but putting that away, (laughs) that too, uh, two different kinds of clicks. There's clicky, clicky clickbait. Okay. Clicky clickbait here for something you have to say, but you'll only know once you pay me. (laughs) <laughs> and you can only know if you're in my inner circle. So my red circle with an arrow pointing at it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So wh- what His I think t-shirt of, is his own face reacting with shock. So okay, oh so my again. god. <laughs> so what what we're running into on No Sleep is that all of these stories are trying. To, the the pressure there is to get seen, and the way to get seen is to tell your story up front. And not only that, it's to chase what somebody else has done and just make the knockoff version of it. Mm. So that's that's a calling effect right there. If you go into the RPC Authority, I think that they've done a, not a perfect job, but a significantly better job than the SCP Foundation of moderating the kind of stories that show up. If you compare, for instance, a lot of the... Uh, wondertainment stories that show up in SCP Foundation mm-hmm. and the equivalent of um, Amazing Co. Amazing Co. is just so much better. Hmm. Amazing Co. is it, like you the know, bottles the, of uh, soda the bottle read, yeah. uh, of the sodas and that kind of stuff. That's 
that is um it's funny but it is also consistent with the world of the scp foundation uh with the rpc authority uh some of the scp foundation stuff is just like downright fucking goofy and like doesn't match whatsoever and I know what they do is they do have these meetings where they, you know, meet on their Discord, have a conversation, and before a story gets added, they have a conversation about the story and they group critique it to make sure that the group thought gets pushed onto the individual's idea and there is, like, you know, some moderation in that, but it's like, you know, a group moderation, like there's a board involved, you know what I mean? And yes, before someone in the comments points it out, Yes, the SCP administrative staff probably in the past did discuss this and then share illegal photos. But yes, <laughs> there's that, too. And, and it, is, it is frustrating because I was watching some videos about the SCP Foundation and the names of some of the predators showed up. And it's just like, man, that sucks. That's awful. Mm. Yeah, I was watching a live stream where uh, this dude was looking at SCP videos. It's somebody that I sort of no, and he was like watching videos on scp stuff and it was like doc let's watch the one on dr bright and i'm like in the chat and i'm like hey ch- check out stuff about dr bright out you know in real life <laughs> you know, just uh <clears throat> did you know that dr bright the fictional character is based off of a real life predator yeah interesting but um i think that that's the main thing is i with the Faceless Corporation, with CRP, with with everything that I've tried to do, there's it's too loose with the and, rules. And that's what's happened. And, uh, those all failed? Yeah, those all failed. Too loose with the rules, too not cohesive. Somebody, one or two people come in and do something different, which is not to place blame on those people or anything like that. It's just that when there's no rules, somebody, you know, diverges. And then I think the next people in line go, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's, that's, now it's become something totally different. But, um, that, that middle ground, I think, is the no story subreddit, where we Which sort is- of, you know, have a group fiction project, sort of, in that it sort of is like a joke thing and it has persisted all this time across a couple different sites. So. And the overarching thing about that is it's a very low time commitment because yes. you can just, you brainstorm those ideas and pop them out. Yeah. I, th- I think if we were to, let's say, make something like that for fear fiction and like actually go in on it and uh, make it work where Fleming storage unit has failed and all of your many, many projects, all of your many failures <laughs> have failed we would have to have some sort of conversation about like, okay, what kind of vibe are we going for? And what are the creative restraints? Uh, we would have to look at our existing community and say like, okay, what are our writing strengths to begin with? Uh, instead of trying to attract people after the fact, look at who we already have and say, right. okay, what, how can we best utilize your talents to, to get what we want out of this? So basically what I think we're getting to here is that, for our brainstorming session of what we would make or, you know, whatever kind of, whatever this turns out to be, the key is a very direct and purpose oriented, goal oriented thing with as few, uh, rules and format requirements as possible, but while still being on that direct course. It's that thing you always say, I want everything in one bag and I want it to not be heavy. <laughs> so. So let's again, let's just narrow this down. Let's say that we're doing this with the two spooky people, the the people who like fear fic, our community. How will we do that? I think, first off, we have to look at the competition and what the competition is doing, whether it's Wayward, um, RPC, SAP Foundation, or even the back rooms. They're all doing anomalous pseudo sci-fi stuff. Like it, it, It's obviously branching, right? You have your... You can have like Wendigo type creatures in the SCP Foundation, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it is ultimately a sci-fi, you know, curtain on it, right? Like that's 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 how it's being framed. I think that we would have to go away from that and embrace that sort of ash can thing if we were to ever make that work. I I think it would have to be more grounded in some way. We we would have to do something where there isn't competition. (laughs) Because our RPC authority is directly competing with SCP Foundation. And that's fine for what it is. But the I think one of the reasons that we keep failing is because we keep trying to emulate things other people are doing. Yeah. 
which is the no sleep problem. True. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, it all, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah. So I think that, uh, if we were to break things down, the best way to go about something is a compartmentalized group fiction project with minimal time, uh, and minimal effort. Basically, what we're looking at is something where you would be able to just create, <clears throat> in terms of like the very base, like imagine you're creating a wiki page. You know, you're setting up a new wiki page. Really, the base thing would be a name for the page and a description of what the page is about, like a paragraph or something. You know what I mean? Like, that's the very yeah, base yeah. of what a wiki page would be. So, like, if you're talking about, like, low commitment, low effort, low time consumption, you know, you're thinking of something where you're coming up with a core premise and then describing that premise briefly and enabling people, if they wish to, to build upon that. But at the base, it's the requirement of just that simple thing, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So, in other words, it wouldn't be like, if you're going to take part in this, make sure you copy this uh, format and then fill out all of the spaces in the form, and then, <laughs> you know, like, make that, sure you the, and, reference this chart here to see what you put in the form here. And <laughs> I think that that's kind of where my issue was with coming up with a Fleming storage unit project, is I didn't think about how, if you're trying to do this in an ash can way, a, a down-to-earth way, a old-school creepypasta way, you can't mimic that SCP Foundation, like, strict formula. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's where I went wrong. But what I probably did get right is instead of having it be like a apartment building with a bunch of apartments where a bunch of people are living next together and they might not necessarily get along. What I did do is make it a gated community. Literally, it's like, hey, message me and I will reserve you a spot in this fictional storage unit that is gated off from other people. So I was kind of like gatekeeping who gets in and who doesn't just by virtue of that. And so I think that we might need to do something like that where, hey, only this community, we're going to see how many people we have in our community, what the interest is, and these are the people allowed in, and we're just doing it to make us happy. Right. And so, so instead of being a big apartment building with a room for a bunch of people, it's a gated community for a small group of people. And if you think about it, too, like one of the things that sort of drives engagement and drives people to want to participate and maybe not, you know, drop off in terms of interest is that idea of like when you talk about gatekeeping and, you know, exclusivity and so on and so forth. Another thing is like a limited supply kind of thing, like like a false scarcity. Like with SCP, it's the SCP numbering. You know, there's a new list of numbers that are available now. I want to get, you know, this number that's significant. So I'll start writing something for this number, you know, that type of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if we did think of something, it probably would be good to do it in a limited scope with the ability to, you know, expand further possibly, but not something like the back rooms where it's like level 1148 is, you know, the back rooms, but everything's, you know, green instead of yellow. Level one, you know, level 2575 is in Arby's, you know, like. It, it, well, make it like scarcity, like, you know, have a limited thing where it's like, you better make it good because this is all that's going to be, you know, in this. Well, wave well that's that's kind of what happened with the Fleming Storage Unit project where it's like, hey, I want this to be a limited thing. Mm-hmm. And then we make it and then it's done. Right. And what ended up happening is a bunch of drama and then also just no follow through. And I didn't follow up. And that was my bad. And I have to vent about it because it's just like. I really did still want to make something out of that. But here's what I'm thinking. If we move on from the Fleming Storage Unit project and do something else, and then as a community say like, hey, we're going to make this project and we're going to end it off. And here's the capstone. Like, boom, we're done. And we edit it and it's done. And it's one complete thing. And then we move on. That's that isn't, um, you know, going to take the Internet by storm, but it is going to be very edifying of just like, hey, that's the story you contributed and that's cool. And, Oh, this writer writes like that and has those elements. And, Oh, (laughs) they included that inside joke there. You know, that, that would be fun just for us. Right. right. So here's what I'm thinking. What if, you know, we should probably pick out like some sort of concrete setting, right? 
and I, uh, just before we do that too, I was just thinking another thing probably would be like the voice of the narrator, for lack of a better term. Do you want to restrict who is writing prospectively the articles? Do you want no. it to be something where people can freely say, uh, like the person writing my article is a you know 1960s hippie who was transported through time to the present day, and so he uses all of these terms? Or do you want it to be like, you know, like SCP is like, these are clinical scientists who say this and, you know, this and this. <laughs> you know, like, do you want to restrict it, or do you want to have it be where anybody anybody can be, like well, any narrator well, can yeah. be used? That's that's the thing, is, you know, you have the SCP Foundation, the RPC Authority doing the same thing, and then you have the Wayward Foundation that says, hey, we want to get away from that. So instead of doing that... We're going to have the same sort of information, but it's going to be conveyed in a folksy way, in the same way that a, you know, a, a camp ranger would explain yeah. it. But then, okay, well, then every person is a camp ranger. Right. So you're, st you're still doing the same thing. And that's fine, but it's just, you know, you're, you're still kind of falling into the, the same formula in a, in a certain way. So theoretically... <laughs> And, you know, I won't hold you back too far, too much longer from what you were going to say, but like, so theoretically, we might want to think of something where maybe common everyday people can, you know, are the people that are engaging in the articles, you know, like you could just say my person writing this is a soccer mom from the suburbs who's a bit of a Karen. And so she you know, is writing her article from, can you believe that this person had the audacity to say this to me, <laughs> like working that kind of tone in and, you know. Like that type of thing. What if what if it was written around uh, people having encounters with the same sort of character? What what? So just let's take a placeholder. Let's say it's Slender Man. What if it's a bunch of people saying like, "Yeah, I encountered this thing, and that's weird." And then uh, they just write up their account, and then somebody else chimes in the same way. I do like that premise. I would say we should make it a specific and well-established type of being as opposed to a specific singular being because then you know because otherwise people are gonna it's gonna oh, become so you're, so you're saying like a gray alien where it's like well i saw a gray alien and i also saw a gray alien but right. like they're not necessarily the same gray alien exactly more like you know uh mothman and flatwoods monster versus you know because like the thing is if you have a single Slenderman character, it's going to bloat to the point of Slenderman now, where he's like, he actually, he's in videos, and he has tentacles, and he impales you on trees, and he has proxies, and he, you know, it's going to be one guy who has 50 million different traits from all different stories over time. Yeah, that's a, that, so that kind of gets into another idea I had of, you know, let's have a, instead of having rules per se, like one or two rules, very few rules, but a decent amount of best practices. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've talked to uh, some RPC people about of just like, hey, so do you have like a list of like best practices and that kind of stuff where it's like, hey, you can do whatever you want, but here's our recommendations on how you keep things on track. Here are some guidelines so that you know what to aim for uh, within your creative abilities. Hmm. So uh, that could manifest itself of saying like, hey, there are gray alien and they are attracted to Oreos and they do this. Do not feel the need to mention the fact that they are attracted to Oreos. Right. Because realistically... Um, not every person who encounters them is just going to be there like, oh, they were eating a sleeve of Oreos, and then every fucking story has, <laughs> oh, they were eating a sleeve of Oreos. This time it was mint Oreos. <laughs> uh, yeah, because so, uh, I, I don't want to take too much like of a, you know, it's that thing of where we're probably both going to be like, you know, gee, which one of us will, you know, suggest this or that. But theoretically, as like an example... You could say something like, uh, you know, as more and more radio waves and frequencies and new technologies emerge, you know, there are essentially beings who are like artifacts of media, you know, like, oh, and so, so, so like, kind of like a tulpa idea, but like a digital tulpa. Right. And so you could have somebody writing about, you know, uh, my husband, you know, I'm an old, I'm a little old lady and my husband died. 30 years ago, but I saw him from our wedding video glitched out in the living room and, you know, like, you know, or some bullshit like that. And you could have, you know, somebody saying, 
you know, I was, I'm a cop working on the, you know, forest on the beat, and I was taking down a street gang when, you know, Mel Gibson from Lethal Weapon came glitching through the wall, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, just, that's just like a stupid example, but, you know, like, that idea of there's a central premise of what the being is, you know, that's something fresh and something interesting that can cover a wide variety of instances of a being, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because then, you know, you have your Pokemon fan that's like, yeah, there was a glitched Pikachu. Yeah. Or, or, or you could make yet, that or, work, seriously, though. Yeah, or, or, yeah better yet, it's, um, you remember the, the Porygon episode where yes. Pikachu uh, gives people uh, seizures? Yeah, just a, a seizure-inducing Pikachu. Was it Porygon that gave people seizures, or was it Pikachu? That's, the, the name of the episode is Electric Warrior Porygon, and so Porygon got all the bad rap, but it was Pikachu wow. that actually did the attack, yeah. See, there's the thing. You can put that in the story. <laughs> and so, yeah, so you could you could do a lot with that. That's that's a, a good idea. But yeah. let's 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 back up for a second. Mm-hmm. Let's let's get a general setting. We could put the setting as something like uh, a yacht club or something like that, just pulling something out of my head. And then, um, you know, we could do something like there's some sort of ape creatures. We could, a, a, and, you know, some sort of general theme, like being uh, bored. Yeah. We could make some sort of, you, you have any idea what we could do with that? I don't know, but the idea, I think the idea is not fucking terrible. <laughs> not fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not fucking terrible. Some people aren't going to get the joke. Anyway, back well, to... What would we call this association if we were to pick three letters to discern? <laughs> <laughs> not fucking terrible. Okay, not, so... It's a not fucking terrible society. Is... Fuck. So, I, I think that the idea of um, VHS monsters is a pretty strong one. Because then at that point, we're co- like, if you back up from that, from the idea of it being VHSs and just generally make it let's say ghost just for a sake of example mm-hmm. if it's just a collection of stories about people seeing ghost and they're not necessarily shared it's just here is a collection that a community made of their ghost encounters right right structure it that way where it's much looser and then again go back forward where it's like okay but they're vhs monster artifacts or whatever. And you can have it be where somebody sees one for a split second. You could have it be where somebody has an hour long conversation. You could have it be where the two of them team up to do some task. You could have it be where the thing is highly antagonistic toward them. You could have it be nonsensical, you know, be all, you know, variation. So if we were to do this, if we were to do this, we're not saying we did it, but if we did it, uh, yeah, I think that this this would be a fun idea. And then um, hear me out. Instead of trying to make this like a big website or something. Oh my god! Meow 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 yeah, meow. Yeah. A digital cat came into his room and began meowing at him. Well, that's digital. the thing. There are plenty of videos of cats on the internet and on video and everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, ooh, okay. Hear me out. What if? There was, th- there are those services where it's like, come on and take your old uh, VHS tapes and and all of your come old photos, down. and we'll come on down. <laughs> and notice you haven't come on down. Take your old photos, and send them to us, and then we will digitize all of them and put them on a USB stick. Uh, what if there was a company that just kept sending back these USB sticks, and then people would wake up in the middle of the night with digital ghosts ro- roaming around? So you think it's a central company, uh, a central conspiracy, company. if you will, uh, a conspiracy, perhaps conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, th- that kind of gives us room as people leading the project to write a few things, some some exposés about the company, trying to like look into it and be like, hmm, okay, why why is this company like this? So. We, as, you know, people running this show, we, we would have some creative freedom to, to kind of write some stories that, that would fill in some otherwise blank areas, and then people could write their personal stories that would be the bulk of it and the thrust of it. Now, this also might be... Well, what I was going to say to that beforehand is... uh we're, gonna, we're probably going to lose Abysme there, because he's going to be like, I don't want to read about some fucking company. 
<laughs> I don't want to find out about the what is this video ink? I don't want to read about that. But uh I was thinking too, what if in terms of rules, if the video character is not personal to the person who is narrating, like let's say, you know, uh, a home video, you know, something like that. What if one of the rules could be that if you are dealing with a specific character that is similar or identical to someone else's video ghost, do you refer to them sort of generically so that it can be viewed as the same character across stories? If that makes any sense. Like, if you're writing a story about... Let's say you want to write a story where you say uh, a police officer from a from a buddy cop movie, you know, is my you know digital ghost or whatever. But then you see, you know, oh shit, there's already a story about you know uh, a buddy, you know, a lethal weapon type, you know, cop, you know, on the site already. So instead of being like, well, I'm going to write that, and there's going to be just two buddy cop ghosts in the canon and then another person now there's three now there's ten different buddy cop ghosts <laughs> you know like over and over and over people with the same idea they want to do it differently what if one of the rules would be that if you're going to work with a trope like that you sort of refer to them as like the cop or something and then when other people write the story they can say you know build off that and say yeah you know I was doing this that and the other thing and I you know now I know now I realize this was the cop you know, now that I've read the story, and here's what he did, blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you know what I'm saying, or would that be like, no, too much of a... I think that that would be... Too meta. Too, no, I think that that would be fine if we were doing something that was grander in scale. Yeah. But it sounds like what we're pitching here is something smaller in scale for a smaller community. And so, again, if we're talking about this, like, digital archiving where you take analog archives and digitize them that kind of like accidentally shuts out the VHS element of just like an old VHS tape. So how could we get that back in some way? Would they, would they accept VHS tapes too and be like, Hey, I just want to preserve this, you know, VHS copy of whatever it is. I mean, there is a lot of, uh, you know, like I, I personally have a machine to, I've never used it, but I have a machine to put uh VH VCR, uh, VHS tapes on, like, DVD and shit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, it, it, it is plausible that, you know, just anyone and any everyone could just do that as, like, an, a side thing. It just, it, it all comes down to, like, the theming and how strong you want the theming to be. And, like, you know, it, it is only this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or it is only that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Only this format. Only that format. Or is it every format? Is it anything digitized? You know? If you scan in a picture, does that count? If you... You know, whatever. I personally am a huge fan of VHS players. I, in a room in the basement, have a VHS player hooked up. I like the whirring of the VHS. The VHS is super fun. You know, it's, You're hipster, it's very yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. It, you know, I am a hipster for VHS tapes, <laughs> uh, especially so like I like them because I'm a weeb and I really enjoy terrible to mediocre anime dubs from the late 80s, early 90s before people figured out how to properly like dub anime and it got very formulaic <laughs> people would just make all kinds of like weird decisions with characters like right. this character is you know scottish for some racist reason. Like, oh yeah. yeah yeah racist yeah there you go <laughs> oh i love the racism it makes me happy <laughs> so you know we could do stuff like that and um no, I, I do think it is plausible that people would send like the the only issue is would people send in their VHS tapes to get uh digitized or would they buy a thing themselves to do it? And you know, that's that's kind of the issue that I'm running into there. Maybe the act of doing it itself causes something as a byproduct, no matter who does it where. I don't know. It's I, it's I something to think about, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having a company yeah. that is the central place where people send in their VHS tapes, because at that point, the company is kind of a mystery box. And how much we want to reveal about the company is up to us. All we know is that, you know, like, where do ghosts come from? I don't know. And it's like, well, where do the these VHS tapes come from? Well, they come from that company over there. What happens inside the company? I don't know. You know, that, that that's kind of what I like about it. What if... 
there what if the company provides a new form of non physical storage of data in terms non- of hmm? non physical storage of data yes i don't know how ex- it, it, it's something that wouldn't be possible in reality probably but like the idea of storing things in electric fields and storing things in uh, particles and waves Ooh. that are just immaterial and not set in a, pl- a space and time in reality. <laughs> so, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So what you're doing is literally just describing cloud services, but what if it is, you're, you're describing it this way and like what you're describing is the cloud, but what if it's like how, how you're actually describing it where it's like some bullshit and it's just like, no, we scanned it into the magnetic radio field. Yeah, exactly. It, <laughs> and then you, um, you know, not all, but again, this goes back to the best practices thing. Best practices is your narrator is gullible and kind of an idiot and wants to have cloud storage, but and thinks they're signing up for like a cloud storage thing. <laughs> but that's not what they're getting. They're getting some like anomalous kind of, you know, ghost making thing. And, and it ends up being cursed. Okay, complete shift, complete change, dropping all that. Okay, yeah, terrible what, idea. I, what, I, I no, thought, it's not a terrible you, idea. You, it's you, just you that agree that all of that was terrible and we're stupid. Something, yes, right? something better. What is the penultimate thing that people have done with media created by humans? That's like the ultimate honor and ultimate show of its importance in the grand scheme of the universe. Uh, copying it? No, sending it to space. Mm. What if you had an initiative to, like, scientists, a company, a corporation that doesn't know if this will work, but it's a theoretical thing and it's fun to imagine and possibly, you know, scientists believe that maybe this may be true, sending our media in this reality, in this format, out into the multiverse, for lack of a better term, even though that's an overused term now with all the Marvel movies and shit but sending it out in wavelengths across unknown dimensions. And, you know, like, Hold this, up, is your what, idea? this is what the your... third dimension created. You know? <laughs> like, okay. Hold up. Uh, disregard that, because your idea is stupid. Fuck. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. We're getting to the point where we have commercial space travel, right? Mm-hmm. Your premise, I'm joking, but, like, let's take your premise, and we're just going to put it on the moon. And it's pitched as so so we can get different ages doing this because I like your idea because then it's not necessarily like gullible people doing it. It could be anybody. Hey, send in your media. Doesn't matter what it is. We're going to put it on the moon. All you got to do is pay for shipping and handling and we're going to put it on the moon. And you can and even then- have things where somebody won a spot or something, you know, like, yes, I want a spot. Yes. And my favorite, my favorite thing is this episode of my little pony. So I sent it, you know, like, <laughs> like and it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, it can so be whatever it you sent, want. <laughs> it gets sent up into space and then it comes back down and it's, um, it, and, and we could come up with like a very vague sounding name, just like digital moon showers or something like that. <laughs> Where now it's on the moon, and for some reason, it being on the moon is putting the projections, the the digital ghost, or the analog ghost, I guess, in the case of, you know, VHS tapes, puts the, puts it on Earth. And now we're experiencing it. So it's like being projected down somehow. What? It, okay, do we want to go with sending it into a wormhole? Sending it into a black hole? I... That see, scientists I, theorize on which the other side may be an entire, you know other galaxy or something here's what i like about the moon one we can we can see the moon two <laughs> god damn it there's a dragon on it i know where this is there's going. there's a dragon on but so we can see the moon and then there's also the element of you know we could frame it as like oh there's listen you know the global warming you know the environment it's getting destroyed oh, we're so close at any point to nuclear war Everything could end, and no one would ever know that we were here, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put stuff on the moon to tell the world, to tell the universe that, like, hey, uh, there were humans here, and we want you to know about them. Uh, Then there's also the element of 
we're so we have commercial space travel now. I think everything is aligning for for the moon to be the destination. Moon is also a, a, a mystic thing in upon itself because, like, the moon symbolizes the nighttime when you know there's you know that's when the go- ghoulies and goblins come out anyway. I, I'm I'm pretty steadfast on this. Um, we're just sending it to the moon, and it just goes to a base. Uh, it's just going to be in a little canister on the moon, and then shit starts happening, and we have no idea why. And it also opens the door for a nighttime public access cable TV show where a guy dresses as an alien, and the title of it is Movies on the Moon, <laughs> where we watch yeah. sci-fi and horror shows. <laughs> Oh, I, I love that because again, it is we're, we're opening it up, and I already have like one or two story ideas that I think are pretty unique uh, to to VHS tapes that I don't think other people would brainstorm. And now I'm thinking about how weird people could get with their stories. Definitely, and uh, it, it's also nice because we don't have to regulate a, a you know a story length, and and I really like that. We don't have to regulate a mood. Um, th- this is all consistent, but uh, it, it, it is in its own way very Ashcan. You know, the, the the premise of like you're allowed one ridiculous thing. Things get shot to the moon, and then there's you know media ghosts. All you have to do is accept that, and then everything else can be realistic. Right. And the thing is, too, you could tie it into phases of the moon. Maybe the signal is stronger <laughs> on certain mm. on certain times. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. You could have it too. I'm trying to think though. Like, w- would it be sending a signal out into space, or would it just be like physically inert, like on the surface? I, you know what I mean? So I think, I, I think it would be interesting because uh, first off, space travel to the moon is not an easy thing. So you know, oh, I do that all okay. the time. Are you fucking kidding? Yeah. So here's the thing: you get the canister right. Everybody reserves their spot, and oh my god, I can't believe I got in. It gets sent to the moon, and now it's up there? And so, like, sending something up there to investigate it is very timely and expensive and costly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like they can just go back up there and evaluate what the problem is. So it's it's hard it's it's easy enough to get it up there, but it's it's like hard enough to where they're not gonna want to do it again. I, I think that that's a, a valuable element of like, well, okay, well, wh- wh- why is this happening? Uh, fuck if I know. We got to go back up to the moon, and that's. <laughs> do, do we need to get like a White House committee on why are there digital ghosts? I think that the first instance should be when people are watching the capsule, and the capsule lands on the moon. And everybody's cheering and celebrating, and then, like, maybe 30 minutes to an hour into the celebrations, Neil Armstrong goes over and kicks it. (laughs) (laughs) Glitchy Neil Armstrong from the video. Well, (laughs) In black and white. (laughs) Here's an idea, isn't it? Yeah, well, you would obviously have to put the moon landing (laughs) in the the case, right? Like, that's that's a given. Um, but wouldn't it be interesting if, you know, you put you, you launching it onto the moon and it's like a social media event and everybody's like talking about it. It's trending on Twitter or whatever. And it gets shot up there and just a few things are off about it. And you get the conspiracy theorists saying, look, we never landed on the moon. This is all bullshit. And they're pointing out some inconsistencies, but their inconsistencies are correct for the wrong reasons. And so there's there's something off about the film in some way, and they're just like, well, that's weird. Look, there's there's like a um, a faded over image here. This is clearly fake, and like it wasn't fake. It was just you know some sort of ghost or, or something like that. Some kind of moon interference, some moon intervention, if you will. The moon effect. I, I think we should call it the moon effect. Ooh. TMA. <laughs> No, there has to be something with an I. The moon interference, TMI. <laughs> but, okay, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of cool things we could go with here for, for terms. But this is a pretty strong idea. I just like the idea of somebody uh, waking up in the morning and going down to get their coffee and just kind of tiredly glancing over to the corner of the kitchen 
and there's like RoboCop charging <laughs> the, the fucking kitchen chairs. Not not necessarily literally that, but you know that type of thing where it's like not the the nonsensical stuff will be the stuff that most appeals to me out of you know whatever people come up with. Well, yeah, the, the, here's here's you could do a lot of very short, funny ones, but here's where I'm thinking: Would this be? something that terrorizes people in some way would it because because i guess there really is no inherent threat there right like or or is there a threat i don't know it depends i mean i'm sure that if you give people free reign then yes there will be in certain aspects there there does need to be some sort of consistency on the rules of like can these projections touch things that 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 i think needs to be like ironed out like is there a danger? I like the idea of them giving you like the uh, like a static snap or making your hair stand on end, that type of thing. Like that, you know when you just... when you walk around on so- in socks on the carpet and then you touch some, touch metal, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing, like a pop. <laughs> well, now now that it doesn't need to be a company or anything, it could be you know it could be Polaroids, it could be VHS, it could be DV- you know it could be any kind of media. You could kind of have different effects for each one. If it's a VHS tape then the static shock kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe there's sort of like a blinding effect that goes on, almost kind of like, you know, when, when you get hit in the eyes with a camera flash, you kind of get that from like a Polaroid or whatever. There, there could be different kind of like associated effects. Mm-hmm. Across, so that's And it could even be like, what the author comes up with in the moment, depending on, you know, how, you know, how st- strict or loose the rules are. Yeah, well... I, I think, again, that's just one of those things where we could have guidelines instead mm-hmm. of rules, you know, and you can bend and break them or, you know, like, hey, VHS tapes tend to have the static shock. So that's telling people, hey, you don't need to put the static shock in there. But that's a thing available. Don't they do that. They also if it's like, eat Oreos. And they also eat Oreos. Don't don't do that if it's a Polaroid, because Polaroids have these list of effects. If you want to include those, that's fine. Just don't include, you know, blah, blah, blah. Don't, blah, blah, blah. don't include dogs. Don't include dogs. No dogs in the story, says the dog. And so, uh, yeah, I think I think that they should probably be able to interact. I think that they should be real. I'm trying to think of, like, what internet videos would, uh, or, you know, videos that start out digitally. What would that be like? Like, uh... Maybe, I don't know, what kind of effects would they have? As things come closer to, you know, higher and higher tech, maybe the glitchy effects wear off and they become more, like, normalized. I don't know. Well, what if what if that's kind of the thing, is the progression of technology makes the things more real? So it, the higher resolution it is, the more dangerous it is? That's just an idea. That could be, yeah. So, like, if something is an old photograph, you know... It's basically, like, just images and, you know, like, visually, like, it literally is images. But you know what I'm saying? In terms of, like, an encounter, you know, you'd be encountering, like, images and, you know, still beings and, you know, maybe, like, the typical cliche thing of somebody outside your window staring silently (laughs) and not moving and, you know, that type of shit. You know, where it's more, like, less motion-based and more, like, eerie, you know? So whatever it would be would have to be consistent with the media, right? So if it's, like... Your grandpa, the grandpa would have to act like the grandpa, right? I would and assume if so. And if it's like a, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog or whatever, Sonic <laughs> the Hedgehog would have to act like Sonic the Hedgehog. Dude, video games would be like a whole untapped thing that somebody would eventually start doing. <laughs> like, video games are media, so those two, you know, like old Nintendo games and like the uh, the centipede from Atari started descending from my roof, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah, Frogger so was outside my door trying to hop in. <laughs> you you would have to think of like the novelty effects. Like I I want there to be clear rules about yeah. like what's going to do what and everything. But you could get novel effects of like, well, we'll bend the rules for this because it it it's doing a cool thing. You know, it could all it could all be fast and loose. It could just we could just put a blanket rule just to put this to bed easily. We could just put a blanket rule that the older the media is, the weaker it is in presence, and the newer the media is, the more strong it is in presence, so that, like, as I said, you know, if you have uh, well, well, Pac-Man the from the, the original the- Atari game, he's not he's going to be less of a threat or less of an influence on reality than if you have, like, a uh, character from Resident Evil 8. <laughs> you know, like... 
You well, know what I mean? here's the thing. What if um, the moon also affects it as well? You get two effects because then if it's um, – let's say that you want an old photograph. Let's say he, – here's just the pitch. Let's say your your grandfather was a killer or something and you still have like a photograph of him and uh, and you have some sort of like trauma with him and he was like an abusive guy. Um, and you want him, you want to write a story about your trauma with him, but he's in an old photograph. So that's not dangerous. What if when the moon's full, it's more effective? So in that circumstance, he can be real. See what I'm saying? So you kind of have two different meters. And if you can get, uh, the, the moon fullness meter up, then, then it doesn't matter that it's old media. Yeah. It makes me think of, uh, what is, is it? Full moon entertainment. Is that a real it, company? It, uh, is that one of the um, Let me, Red Letter Media Bad Movie companies Yeah, I or think something? that's... Oh, God, I typed Gall Moon. D- does that idea sound like a good idea? Like, hey, the, the, more, uh, the more moon you got, the more effect you got? Yeah, the thing is, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm thinking we should pick one or the other so that people don't get bogged down. But we should probably go with Full Moon then, right? Because so, then, then we can still have the versatility of... Anything can be uh, a, a potentially actual dangerous threat. Right. You could have uh, something that would otherwise be uh, like retro vintage, you know, kind of almost like a joke. And then it would be like a deadly, <laughs> you know, incredibly terrible thing. But yeah, Full Moon Features, I guess, is the company. Makers of uh, Puppet Master, Trancers, and shit like that. Oh, yeah. yeah those things. Yeah. That's what it so- is. So maybe we should go with that. Maybe we should go with moon moon effect. The the amount of moon you got is the amount of uh, realness. So so like you know if it's a VHS tape, it's still going to be a glitchy VHS tape no matter what. Or if it's a pristine pristine VHS tape, but like you know the the effect will still be there. But the the realness should be determined by the moon cycle. Right. And you, that would be a very easy way for anybody to do anything they want with the mm-hmm. you know severity of the you know situation, because you could say it was Jason Voorhees, and luckily it was only a half moon, so you know you know, yeah, actually the, had a the, chance to live. You know, <laughs> the, the person wouldn't actually say that, but that's what yes. the result would be. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But uh, the thing is too, like if we think about like groups and stuff, I really want their. Like, you know, because there's always this thing that arises with SCP and, you know, all the different things where they're like, there's different factions and there's the Chaos Insurgency and there's, you know, all these other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want there to be a group called the Movie Club who Ooh. are just some, like, they're a group of people who are united in their desire to find and have relations with their favorite character. <laughs> or, or uh, potentially. Like they just, they just want to fuck movie characters or, you know. Video game characters, whatever. <laughs> they they start a kick Kickstarter to just be like, let's send all of our waifus to the moon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God damn it. The, the, so like uh, there was a sighting. That's... There was a sighting of rarity in Idaho. Let's go, guys. They all hop in the van. Oh you know? <laughs> Fuck. The, that's a um, th- that's a fun idea. I think if we were to do this, we would have to stick to just right a story that happened at the same time, like, you know, within the range of a few months. And, and we would also have to kind of like come up with, um, general opinions on how the world would react to this. Like, w- would we live in a skeptical world where everybody is just like, well, that's bullshit. And you're stupid for the most part, besides like a small group of people that are like, no, I really saw this. Yeah. I mean, I think that without an organization stifling things, you would have to basically go the route of anybody who expresses their stories about this is seen as a crackpot. Because you don't want it to just be commonplace now where it's like, you know, on, you know, in, in other news tonight, you know, yet another sighting of this, you know, thing and blah, 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 humdrum, who cares, you know, just yeah. stay away from this area because this guy's back, you know, <laughs> like. You, you know, eventually word would get out, but it would probably be a, a good amount of time and. I do think that the uh, the official stance of the government would be like, no, it's, it, we, we need to cover this up. Right. Uh, we need to treat these people like they're crackpots. They wouldn't have to go out there and suppress media. They would just have to be like, well, that's a Photoshop, that's fake, uh, fake news, blah, blah, blah. It, you know, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, and, and maybe it could be one of those things like uh, 
after Thanos did the snap or whatever, and then there's like support groups for people. Right. Maybe it's maybe this could you know all of our stories could be some sort of support group. It could of be just like maybe that could be like the movie club, you know, quote unquote. Yeah, it, it could just be a thing of just like, club. hey, I had a traumatic experience with this, and uh, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, too, like, if you do have people that try to squash discussion of this, they should be called the censors. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're out trying to censor media. <laughs> you just get bots on Twitter being like, no, nah, it's not real. Yeah. Well, I think we have a solid idea. What do we call it? I think we call it The Breakfast Club. All right. End, end podcast with the theme from The Breakfast Club. What is it? Don't, don't, don't. Don't, 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 me. don't. Just loop it, Elias. That way we don't get struck. <laughs> yes. For... Don't, 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 don't. And after this, don't, don't. After this is uploaded, please upload don't, don't, the ten don't, hour don't, don't <laughs> video. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> <laughs> ten hour breakfast club. Don't. I think that this is a pretty fun idea. Maybe we should do something with it. Unless maybe. If this video gets to 100 views and 200 likes, we will do it. Yeah. Yeah. If this video, what is, I don't know what our usual like situation is. We should set an actual goal for that. <laughs> we'll set up this site if this video gets 20 comments saying what you would do with uh, your premise. There we go. You don't if have to write you... a whole story, just give an idea. Yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. We want to make sure we have people who will actually do it and won't yeah. fucking wuss out like a bunch of pussies. <laughs> and we will put a strict time limit on You know, that, that's probably a good idea. Put a strict time limit on it where it's just like, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to write it this week. We're going to have a Discord meeting the next week where we have read each other's stories and have you know basically just editing feedback not like hey i want to change your story just like hey you Fuck off. type typo here or yeah. whatever and then we're going to be done with it oh you know what it's if we just if we fuck maybe we could do this anyway it would be cool if like the danger levels were pg pg 13 R. <laughs> well, well, not do, do all of the things need to be movies though? Because no, we're sending that's up. That's like, what I'm saying is maybe we could do it anyway. <laughs> Who cares? No, we the danger levels could just be uh, moon cycles. Yeah, like it's a full and, moon threat. And to be clear, nobody would have to fill out like a form or anything. You no, wouldn't have to. No, you wouldn't have to put like a danger level. It just is like a funny idea. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, c commit. In the uh, comments below, and then also just be willing to write a story in, you know, a week, and then edit it the next, and then we just have it, you know? Yeah. And do we want? Do we have any length set for the story, or can it be just basically whatever people want? I think that anybody should just be able to contribute a two paragraph thing if they want. Right. And then I would say like, I don't know, like a maximum of like two pages. Like it shouldn't go on forever. It should yeah. be. Cause the thing Pretty is guys, point. let's be honest. I know that you want to be a writer. You know, you want to be a writer. You, you, you are a writer if you write anything, but let's be honest. You're not going to finish a long story. <laughs> We're, I, I don't finish long stories. <laughs> that's the issue. Be honest, it took be me real. forever. <laughs> Guys, it, it took me, like, basically a year to write Pizza Hatch 3 for some reason. I wrote the first two, and I just didn't finish it. Yeah, he was like, what happens after you come on down to Pizza Hatch? I notice uh, you still haven't come on down to Pizza Hatch again. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, there's that. So, let's <laughs> get into the episode. Yeah. Well, so, just come on down, and come on down, and... We noticed that you haven't sent your digital media to the moon yet, so why don't you just rock it on up? Come on up. Come on up to the moon. What do they call those? They call those time capsules, right? Or do they call yeah. them that if they're sent into space? I don't know, because they're not... Presumably, they're up there not to be open, just to... You know, it's just kind of like a fun thing, right? Like, for aliens, I guess. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what the fuck you would ever call something like this. You know, in terms of like, you know, uh, the uh, guys, I had an experience too. I saw a capsule escapee. You know, like, like what would you? Like, not really. 
<laughs> I saw Project. an entity. It's kind of like bloodless. You know, like I saw a glitch. Doesn't really, you know, I don't know. Um, it could be something an like artifact. Backup, backup drive. Like, hey, just in case like Earth gets destroyed, we have a backup drive in space. Yeah, you know? but I'm, like, what are we? What are the entities called, if anything? Moon drivers. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> moon well, driver sounds like a bad VHS movie <laughs> about truckers on the moon. <laughs> oh moon my drivers God. coming to a moon. theater near you. Rated R. Oh, we, we go. gotta haul these. We gotta haul these moon rocks across the moon. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do they do it? Nobody knows. <laughs> Who's <drivers>. paying them? <laughs> Sorry, what? PG. This has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts are Abysme, Dead Palette, and Slime Beast. Music by Abysme. Art by C.F. Comer. Voice over by Atticus Jackson. Edited by Elias the Intern. Subscribe to Fear Fic on YouTube to stay up to date on new episodes. Hello, kids, and welcome to Mr. Bear's house. Today, I'm a little under the weather. I had to visit an orphanage, and, well, I had to endure a lot of pain to make it back to where I am. Mr. Bear got a little burnt, and maybe when you're a little older, you'll understand what I mean when I say I had to witness the sixth ring of H.E. double hockey sticks to get back here. So, I just want to cheer up with some of your mail. It really does help a lot. So, Shu wants to know, where did the bodies go and how did they disappear so quickly? Well, the natural state of the world is unconsciousness. And because most of existence has been that, the world yearns to return to it, so nature reclaims what it owns very eagerly. Maybe that's a big question for a kid's show. k Mac asks, why are kids so stupid? <laughs> I love kids. You have to understand, the world is a dangerous place. Living is a constant threat. And selfish parents keep their kids around for their own petty desires, biological wrongness. Kids are smart, and the younger, the smarter. Babies are born crying because they realize the injustice put upon them by the volatility of knowing this cruel world. Wow. Today's episode is a little special. Here's a light-hearted mail from Fycrook's Red Wolf. How many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? <laughs> That's a very silly question, because the moon is extremely dangerous, and we should be careful to not insult the great moon dragon. But I'll be over by your house soon to borrow a cup of sugar. I'll need it to make my special bear brownies that I give to all my happy campers. They give everyone sweet dreams. Finally, we have two letters in one envelope. Shadow White says, Oh, hi there. And Controller Jar says, Howdy, old pal. <laughs> well, thanks for saying hello. In some parts of Canada, they don't say howdy or hi, they say salut. And we don't want them to be Canadians because francophones are dangerous. That's all for this episode of Mr. Bear's House. Leave a letter under your pillow, and I'll collect it later. I do want to, just before we get the to there, I do want us to sit down and brainstorm uh, 
either each of us doing one and then we add to it as a group or just one throughout the contiguous hour long episode of I, us brainstorming I, a SCP RCP Wayward Society backrooms idea. Doesn't have to have any you know any starting limit, just an idea of a group wiki. Not that we do it, just like a fun exercise. Um uh- I guess, I guess, do we want to just do a fucking, um, that episode right now? Uh, how do we, no. how do we feel? You don't want to? I do not have the mental capacity right now. Okay. 